Hey you guys, it's your host Julian. This week I sit down with the voice of Harold from Hey Arnold and Rhino from Spidey and His Amazing Friends, Mr. Justin Shankaro. We chat all things Harold including how he came up with the voice, his favorite episodes, and what it was like working on the show in those early days. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the show, make sure you smash that subscribe button whether you watch or you listen. And if you're listening, make sure to leave us a 5 star rating and a review. It helps great animation and pop culture fans like yourself find the podcast. Now, without further ado, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What's In My Head podcast. I'm your host, Julian, and today I'm joined by Justin, the voice of Harold, man, from Hey Arnold. Justin, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. It's Harold. It's so good to see you, Julian, and be on the show. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. There's, uh, you know, getting to talk to Craig Bartlett a couple weeks ago, man, it really... It's put a lot of shit into perspective, man. I get to get a piece of my childhood each and every week. This is why I do the podcast, so I get to share these pieces of my childhood with the fans that listen in, man. And you guys, like I said, were a huge part of that. Uh, I, I can't imagine that I'm not going to ask anything you haven't been asked before, but I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a shot. If I can stump Justin, that's what we're going to do, man. Uh, but let's take it back, man. Uh, you're 14 when you get cast for Harold, correct? Around there? Yeah, I was around there. I think I was... I th- I think I was 14. I think you're right. Um, I failed fucking math twice. Uh, so <laughs> I that shit, right? uh, but the only reason I bring that up is because I had a I had a friend of yours. And I'm sure you guys talk often, but Olivia Hackman, she played Rhonda. And uh, I asked this question I'm going to ask you, and I felt like a dumb dumb because I didn't realize she was as young as she was. And she's like, are you really going to ask me what it was like to work on a show when I was like fucking nine, 10 years old, 30 years ago, damn near. So I hate to ask that question, but I got to ask that question, man. What was it like when you get the call for the pitch that, hey, we want you to come in. We want you to voice this character. You remember anything special about that day? You know, I just remember going in and auditioning and it was an awesome experience. And it was directly with Craig, who was the creator of the show. And he kind of gave me the 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 character drawing for Harold and I reviewed it thought of what his voice could be we went in there and worked on it and you know fortunately I was called back in for the job which was awesome that's kind of what I remember now obviously this is a very long time ago man and that's it's one of those characters that I think doesn't get brought up enough and that character in particular being Harold and uh he had such a huge character arc man from you get a bully but then you start seeing some of these episodes that just star him and you get to see there's many layers to this character man so you start out i don't know about you but i I did not like this character because i was bullied a lot as a kid i was like fuck i don't like this guy and then you start seeing him work in a butchery shop man i have to hats off to that episode I'm, i'm a i'm a chef by trade so I love meat fabrication, right? So butchery is a dying art form in my profession. And that kind of opened up the doors. Like, wow, that's really cool. These guys get to do all this this meat fabrication and cuts and sausages, and they get to make people happy, right? Um, and then you get a kitten, and then you see, see another side of Harold wake up. As, as a kid, I can't imagine you're going through a huge range of emotions or trying to figure that out. But what was it like starting out as one character, but then delving deep into this character and finding a different voice for him? It was great because I think, you know, whenever you work on a show and you really have the opportunity to expand the character and see where the character is growing. And obviously, Harold was very dynamic. Mm-hmm. The One of the fun things about the show was we were allowed to do a lot of improv so I could bring a lot of fun improv to Harold. And it was great to see him grow and change over time because, you know, we were fortunate to have several seasons of the show. And through that course, you got to see him evolve and work in the butcher shop and have a bar mitzvah and, you know, have all sorts of excursions and episodes that were solely focused on him, which was awesome. What was it like as a kid going to school when you were doing the show? I mean, obviously you were, you were acting already, but like, what is it like for you personally, mentally, emotionally? How do you navigate those waters during school? You know, I mean, Harold, uh, Hey Arnold was, was um, for the kids like about, eight, 10 years younger than I was. So all the kids I was in school with, they weren't watching it um, because we were already teenagers at the time. It was, it was for kids that were kind of, you know, elementary school age. So they didn't think anything of it. They don't even, I don't don't even think they knew I was on it. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, when I was working, I had a lot of when I'd be on set, which for a cartoon, I really, you're, you're not, you're, you're going in and you're recording after school hours. So I'd usually record like at three, so I'd be in regular school. Um, but when I was doing a lot of TV shows, you know, when I would be on set, I had a school teacher there, like a tutor. And then as soon as I was done working on set, then I would go and back to regular school. Did it feel like work? Did it feel like fun? Did it feel fake, man? What does it feel like? Oh, in terms of being on set? No, it felt like fun. You know, I mean, it's work in terms of like, you know, preparing for the role and studying the lines. But yeah, I mean, I don't think you ever talk to an actor who isn't grateful to be on set and working. It's it's a it's a very, very fun, creative experience. And if you're allowed the opportunity to do it, then <laughs> you're you're very fortunate because many 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 hundreds of thousands millions of people want to do it and it's you know it's a tiny tiny sliver of folks that get the opportunity absolutely man and i, I gotta say I, you, you'll hear me say this every time i have a guest on man you guys crush like if i have you guys on it's because i love what you do and you absolutely crush that role man uh thank so you. How, how thank you how long did it take you to kind of flush out that voice or that feeling or that character for harold you know it's funny very quickly i looked at the uh the character art that Craig had, had drawn and and the and the lines and just immediately I kind of went to that because I was bullied like you know pretty much all of us were bullied as kids you were either the bully or getting bullied yeah and I thought all right you know how does the bully at my school sound and they were always had that kind of deeper heavier register and they were a little intimidating and so that's kind of where I went to at that time and fortunately I did I lowered my voice a lot so I'm still able to do Harold now which is wonderful how often have you used that to get into or get out of something? I always like asking this with voice actor folks that have voiced some people, whether you do it through a drive through a cop pulls you over, man, this guy looks young or this lady <laughs> looks young. Maybe, maybe they might know who I did. You ever tried to use it? No, that's actually a great idea. You know, I think fortunately I've only gotten two, you know, tickets for mm. driving in my life knock on wood. Hopefully I never get another one. They suck. They're very expensive, but uh, no, I've, I've never kind of pulled it out to try to save myself in a situation. But now that you give me that idea, if I'm in that predicament, I definitely will. Oh, that'd be interesting to see Harold work his way out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, sticking with Hey Arnold for just a little while, like I guess the show is super important to so many folks, man. Uh, obviously, when you're going through it, I don't want to say you, you can't appreciate it, but you kind of it's it's work at the end of the day. You have a lot of fun, like you said. You know, very few people get to do what you guys do. Um, but did you know how important or how special the show was while you were doing it, or did it kind of hit you later in life? I had no idea. Uh, I, you know, again, going back to being an actor on a show, you don't know whether you're going to do one episode. You don't know whether you're going to do five episodes. You don't know whether you're going to do a season, mm -hmm. a second season, a third season. There's so, you know, that the amount of control that you have is like so nominal. You just have no clue what the studio is thinking, what the network is thinking, what the production company is thinking. There is all sorts of behind the scenes stuff that as actors and voiceover talent, we don't have any insight into. So every day that you're called into work, you're grateful. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to work on many different sets and it's always a joy. Hey, hey Arnold was a, a very fun experience. We had an incredible cast and it was fun where we could come in and we were able to actually come together and read the lines um, and uh, participate together on the show and read the script top to down. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I thought we had something special, but I've, I, you, again, you, you just never know. And it wasn't really until I was in my late 20s and early 30s that I realized how it resonated so much with people that were younger than me. Because, you know, I, I'm not typically hanging out with folks 10 years younger than I am. And I didn't realize that that was, Hey Arnold was the show that they really grew up with. Kind of like I grew up with He-Man. I grew up with with the uh, Transformers. I remember uh, a couple years ago meeting one of the uh one of, I, it turned out to be a buddy of mine but i didn't realize that he played he-man and i was starstruck i was like holy smokes i was blown away it was it was so great to meet him and you know he's just a voiceover guy just like me how when when that when that meeting happens or when you find out that that, that registers it clicks it's like uh 
how starstruck were you? I mean, were you were you in shambles? I couldn't talk. I couldn't do it. Did you ask him anything and everything, or how, how was that after? Yeah, I was definitely a little starstruck for sure. But I just I remember being like, because I'd worked with him before. I just didn't know. I I came up in conversation, and I was like, holy smokes, you played He Man, dude! I grew up on that show. I freaking love that show. That's my favorite cartoon as a kid. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it was. I, I probably had about 30 seconds of just being like, wow, and then moved on. <laughs> well, that's really cool, man. It's it's always interesting because at the end of the day, you guys are fans like us. I mean, you can't do what you do and not be a fan of cinema, whether it's cartoons, whether it's film, whether whatever it is, man, whatever gets you there. And it's interesting and cool to see you guys have kind of the same reaction we have when we get to talk to you. Um, now with hey arnold man obviously you've got some of those episodes that you had mentioned before bar mitzvah the bush of the cat you know you see harold really changed as the series goes on uh where do you think you felt more most comfortable was it that that bully role was it that opening up and that real soft role where did you feel more comfortable as harold well i mean i think harold had all of those aspects to him just like frankly all of us do we all have those different kind of personalities within us but i i had the most fun when harold really was more emotional when he opened up when he had his sensitive side when he was there with big patty and you know all those kind of elements to him that were not initially seen by the audience because they just thought he was the bully well he wasn't he he had a lot of insecurities and he had a lot of goals and hopes and desires just like every other character so when we were able to see some of those moments in the show, I love being able to extract those. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, was there anything that was super difficult as far as voicing that character? I mean, I hear so many times when you guys talk about voicing a character, you've really got to, it's easier if you know how to sing. you got to sing, you know, come from the diaphragm, bite the throat so you don't blow out your throat. You've got a very, I don't want to say interesting voice in a bad way, but it's a very interesting voice for Howard. And I got to imagine, did that put a lot of strain on you as a 14 year old? It didn't, you know, doing Harold wasn't a, a strain. However, I like to sing. I think I have a decent singing voice. However, Jim Lang, who did all the music and the composition for Harold, for Hey Arnold, who's spectacular. Whenever we would have our group singing scenes as cast members, he would always say, all right, Justin, you're gonna have to sit out of this one because your voice is poking through so much. We'll have to record Harold separately. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. You last a less yeah, you left a lasting impression on old Jim Lang. That's uh, right. What uh what was some of the music now would you is that how you would warm up? Because I hear a lot of folks they like to sing when warming up before they go into the booth. Is that what you would do too? I should. No, I don't. I just mm -hmm. uh I mean I do so many voiceover auditions and voiceover work. I just go in there. Uh, you know, yeah. I take care of myself. I drink a lot of tea with honey and um you know, fortunately, I haven't had any issues, but I think that's more of a singers clearly can get nodes on their on their vocal cords. And they I think they have a lot more issues than voiceover talent. It, that's kind of what I've seen so far. I've been doing it for, you know, over 30 years now. So, you know, knock on wood, everything's OK. Well, that's good, man. Hopefully another 30, 40, 50 years we can get you. There out we of go. The uh, when. Like I said, when this uh, when this show's going on, obviously you're the elder statesman, right? At that time, yeah. Were you uh, were you giving the kids any game? Like, hey, man, this is how you got to navigate through this life. How do you do? You give <laughs> advice as a 14 year old man. How how does that for the younger crowd? No, nah, because they were only you know maybe they were 12, maybe they. I mean, Olivia was maybe a little bit younger, but um, no, we you know we would all hang out. I was very close friends with uh, Jamil. I still am. Who played yeah. Gerald? We did a lot of traveling together as like late teens, early 20s. We went on vacations together. So we were really close buds. And yeah, I was friends with everybody. You know, we'd see each other at like Nickelodeon kind of parties and events and so on. Um, but yeah, Jamil was was one of my closest friends. So we'd hang out the most often. That's really cool, man. Uh, what was what were the Nickelodeon parties like, man? I'm from Orlando, Florida, so I remember when Nickelodeon Studios looked like Nickelodeon Studios. Now it's it looks like Nickelodeon grew up and is depressed whenever you drive by the studios. It's all painted brown and shit like that. There's no more orange. There's no more green. There's no Why? more. No oh man, it's the studios moved out to L.A. Uh, when everything started getting hot and heavy, so they kind of closed it down out here. So there's no more production. Oh. Did the same thing. Disney had the studios where Lilo and Stitch was made. Mulan was made out here too, and then they closed everything down to consolidate and move out to LA. But 
What were some of those uh, Nickelodeon parties like, man? They were fun. Yeah, we had them at uh, usually at like a back lot, you know, at Paramount mm -hmm. or at Nickelodeon itself, which is in Burbank. And it has the orange and the green and yeah. all the fun, very, uh, you know, bright colors and exciting stuff. So, yeah, it would be a lot of fun. They'd have, you know, hors d'oeuvres and sodas, et cetera. And we'd hang out and play pool and, you know, see each other. Just kind of any like festive party. It just happened to be at a, a big studio. Yeah. Um, so flash forward and head here, and we'll probably jump over just a little bit, you know, here and there just to cover as much as we can about your career before we get to the fans' questions. Um, but you guys get a little bit of a revival. What's it, like 15 years after or, or 13 years, give or take. Like I said, I failed math twice. Um, <laughs> you know, with the Jungle movie, man, what was it like getting that call? Say, hey, we want you to come back. Hey, we want to kind of wrap this up. And you're coming well, back. Well, that wasn't the call I got. The call I got was, uh, come on back and see, do you want to audition to play Harold? I was what? like, huh? I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, well, you know, we're re-auditioning all the existing talent because we don't know whether you guys can play, do the same voice. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of shocked by that. But um, I worked on it, and fortunately, I was able to get the part <laughs> again. Uh, for the character that, you know, I had worked on and created and did so long. But a lot of the original voiceover actors were not in, you know, the Jungle movie as their yeah. original characters. They came in, which was nice, like as side little characters. But, <laughs> excuse me, they had a lot of new voices come in. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was great to do. I mean, it was the fans that made it happen, mm -hmm. really. For yeah. years, the fans wanted the movies. The fans wanted another season. And I would interact a lot with fans on like Facebook and, and, uh, you know, there were some great leaders in the fan club that really pushed Nickelodeon to make it happen. And, you know, fortunately with social media, that's feasible. So it was great. I wish we would do another season. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but it was, I, it's a credit to the fans that made it happen. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's something that resonates with so many folks, you know, the movie, the TV series, the characters. You know, I'm pretty sure you hear it all the time, man, but it was it was the first show I can ever remember watching where they were giving us like real world experience or real, real world problems. Right. So I remember going through, like I said, getting bullied or, you know, I was probably the kid that needed to be tutored, just didn't get tutored. Um, but, you know, all of this shit and it just didn't talk down to us. It was one of the most interesting. And even today, I don't know how often you probably take a step back and look at the show or go and watch a clip or something like that on YouTube. But it fucking still holds up, man. It's 20 years damn near after it's ended, and it still holds up. It's just, it's an everlasting show. Um, I agree. I think it was it was a, a fantastic show. There were, you know, every episode had a great moral. Um, it was entertaining, but as you said, it didn't talk down to kids. It was very much on the same level, and you can watch it now, and it still holds up. And from my standpoint, it's still a lot better than most cartoons out there. Absolutely, man. This one, this is the only reason I tuned into Nickelodeon. Like, if it wouldn't, I'm always a Cartoon Network kid through and through. Mm -hmm. If it wouldn't have been for Hey Arnold, man, I, I would have tuned into Nickelodeon, but it wouldn't have been as much as I did because of Hey Arnold, man. I told you right before we hit record, and I, I'm pretty sure I told Craig this too, and I think I told Olivia, but you guys gave me something really special with this show. Uh, I was in the Navy for about seven and a half years, give or take. Um, and thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. and Hey Arnold was a security blanket for me, man. Whenever I'd feel like I was missing my home, missing my wife, missing my kid, missing my dogs, right? Missing my country. I'd been out of the country before at that point in time, but never for an extended period of time, like six to nine months, depending on the deployment schedule and the deployment cycle. And whenever I would fucking feel at my lowest, I'd pop in that DVD set. Cause I would take this, this is ladies and gentlemen, before you had streaming. And when you're on a boat, you really can't stream shit. Cause there's no internet service out in the middle of the <laughs> internet. Right. So, you know, I'm sitting there and I've got the box set of uh, Hey Arnold and I'm popping it in. And it just was, like I said, a security blanket. It was like, oh, fuck, man, everything's going to be OK. I got seven months left. I started feeling depressed again. I got four months left. I got three months left. Mm -hmm. You guys helped me without really knowing it, man. So, like I said, anytime I can have you guys on, it's my ever dying. Thank you for that. Um, and oh, I appreciate that. That's very cool. That's uh, again that, you know, it's kind of the the wonderful things about being a part of a show, you never know how it's going to resonate with someone and, and, you know, can help you when you were in the Navy. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Well, like I said, man, it was, uh, it's, it's that, that good of a show. Um, I told you I wouldn't get too personal with you, man, but I, I got to ask, do you have kids? 
No, I don't. I'm still single and, and ready to mingle. I'm looking for a wife. So <laughs> when I do, I'll let you know. Beautiful. Well, the only reason I ask, man, because I, I, I'm always curious to see this because. How old are your kids? I've got, it's, it's interesting because I got a 13 year old. We have an almost two year old and then I've got a little girl on the way in two months. Oh, congrats. Have you, are you watching Spidey and his amazing friends on Disney plus? Not yet. Uh, I've booked uh, about 100 hours on Encanto, 100 hours on 101 Dalmatians, and then we just started Lilo and Stitch with the youngest one because uh, he's cool. Dude, it's before before we had him. Like I liked Encanto. I, I love Encanto now. It's it used to turn me off with we don't talk about Bruno that song because it was like a hello from Adele. Everywhere you went, you heard it, no matter where right, you were right. at. And it was just like oh, I'm so fucking tired of Bruno. And then I. I'm forced to sit down and watch Encanto with him because that's all he wanted to watch. I think it was the colors. It was the beautiful songs and everything. And then this fucking movie, I've, like I said, I've seen it 100 hours a week at least. I'm watching it 10, 12 times a week. And I fucking cry. I don't know if you I'm pretty sure you've seen the movie, but I cry at the end of the movie. There's a few songs that I start getting super emotional with. Um, but we haven't started Spider-Man yet because anytime we don't have Encanto on or anytime we don't have 101 Dalmatians on, He's losing his shit. He's just in Canto, or he says Canto, or he says dog, 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 dog. So not quite yet on Spidey, but why'd you bring up Spidey? I can imagine you've worked on it. Well, because I uh, play Rhino on Spidey. Really? So, yeah, you got to check it out. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's a fantastic show. We're the number one show on Disney+, Plus, and it's for two to six-year-olds. Oh, shit. He's about to be two, so maybe I can... Maybe I can talk him into watching yeah. it. And then call me sometime and I'll and I'll do the rhino voice for him. Oh, beautiful. That's really sweet of you, man. Um so let's let's talk Spidey for just a second. Uh what was it what was what's it like playing a villain, man? I mean, what's it like Rhino? Were you I, obviously you're a He Man fan. You said like you were on up Transformers and stuff. So I gotta imagine, you know, Marvel Comics or DC Comics probably played some part in your life, maybe. Um, but what's it like playing a villain for Marvel? Oh, it's awesome. I love it. I love the uh the Spidey team, Marvel's amazing. I'm a huge fan, and they're just incredible. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a gift and a pleasure to be able to play Rhino. We we play a lot when you know I'm in the booth working with the whole team, and they write just hilarious, fun stuff for Rhino. And because it's for two to six year olds, you know, Rhino isn't too scary. You know, he's he's yeah. more fun. He's more goofy. He's lovable. He's just. Uh, you know, sometimes can't get out of his own way, but you know, he's, he's a blast. We're having so much fun and, um, it's so great to be able to share this show with, uh, with kids and, you know, with parents. That's really cool. As, as you've gotten, as you've gotten, you know, further down the road in your career, do you tend to take, do you want to stick into, you know, family, family style anime or not just animation, but family style shows, or do you want to branch out and do other things? Like I said, your Instagram page is fuck it's fun i love i i laugh like i'm just scrolling i'm like well he's got a new one so i'm gonna have to watch can you tell the fans <laughs> about this guy i have a lot of fun with this one thank you julian yeah no i mean for me as an actor like you always just want to play and do different roles whether it's you know horror thriller comedy family whatever it may be the opportunity just to be able to stretch yourself and play different characters is is a gift so <laughs> I always say yes to as many opportunities as I possibly can. Yeah, well, that's really cool, man. Always say yes, ladies and gentlemen. Don't ever say no because they'll find somebody that's else. That's right. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, I figure we can rotate into some fans' questions because there's quite a few fans that want to pick your brains, and they had. Cool. I like your mic, by the way. That's cool. I love how it glows in different colors. Oh, thanks. I'll send you a link for it after. I got it on sale off of Amazon. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I, obviously, I, I, unfortunately, not obviously, but unfortunately, I can't change the color because it only works for Windows as far as you can pick whatever color you want. Um, uh -huh. So as soon as I hook it up to the MacBook, it resets everything. I was like, God damn it. I was I wanted to set it to pink because pink in the background picks up real nice in the camera. So um, nice. yeah, man. So but yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link for it. It's one of the best things I've ever bought. Um, cool. So, uh, Obviously, we tend to go a little bit deeper whenever I'm talking. However, the fans, I didn't want to seem like I was encroaching on their questions because everything I thought of, somebody else thought of better and they articulated way better than I could, right? So they sounded a lot <laughs> smarter than I am. Um, so we're going to start it off here. Uh, Master Easy wants to know, were Master you ever... Easy, what's happening? Yes, Master Easy, man. Were you ever really hungry whenever you had to say... I was hungry for the running gag. 
That's hilarious. That is a great question. Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, you know, I have to say, I don't think I was hungry, but I always kind of am hungry. I'm an eater. I love to eat. So Master Easy, I would say I wasn't specifically hungry, but I was slightly hungry at all times. <laughs> you're like the Hulk. You, you're yeah. always angry, right? That's the secret. Right. Uh, so like I said, man, I, I think I told you in the beginning, I cook for a living. You said you like to eat, man. What's your go-to cuisine when you like to eat? Oh, well, I'm a big foodie. I love to eat all types. I mean, sushi is always probably my go-to for everything. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I love steak and, and uh, Thai food and Indian food and salmon and Italian. I mean, I'm a... I, you know, I Ethiopian. I love it all. What What do you uh, are you a sh as a chef? What do you make, or what are your kind of specialties? Uh, so I'm from the south, man. So Granny instilled in me real young, man. You got to have really good fried chicken, and you've got to have really good mac and cheese. So those are right. two things that I take extremely personal. However, I am diverse when it comes to food, man. Uh, if it wouldn't be for southern food, Mexican food would hands down be my favorite of all time. Yeah. What they do, and ladies and gentlemen, don't take this the wrong way. What they do with ingredients as simple as a tomato, an onion, and a garlic, and a pepper, it's second to absolutely nobody else's cuisine, man. It's mm -hmm. The Japanese are probably the most technically sound when it comes to food, when it comes to night fork, when it comes to damn near anything. They are fucking flawless in the kitchen. However, Mexican, they take something that is so homely, so simple, yet so elegant and they highlight it to the out i just there's no words to really describe what i'm trying to say when it comes to mexico it's it's fucking amazing at the end of the day um agreed the agreed agreed yeah love it the restaurant i work at it's i've my chef that i work for is classically trained french he's from atlanta so we if you literally look at the menu do we go we have a blue corn hot dog or blue corn corn dogs right so we're using an anson mills heirloom grain um, so we have a blue corn corn batter, which is really, really cool. Um, you know, and then we'll have a steak or we'll have something that has some kind of a Colombian sauce. And then we pair that with something that's Southern. And then we'll take that and do something French. And then we'll do something that's German. Wow. And then we make everything come together. Um, so James Russell here, he wrote in, he said, I love the character depth of Harold. That episode where he works at the butchery really shows us a whole different side to him. What is your most memorable moment of voicing Harold? And do you have a favorite episode? Great question. I mean, definitely my favorite episode is the bar mitzvah episode. Uh, that was just a blast. I mean, I love the butcher shop one, obviously. Every episode with Harold, I love because I got the opportunity to just have fun and play. Um, favorite moments? I'd probably say when I came up with Madam Fortress Mommy. Um, yeah. I just thought that that was too funny. And any opportunity I get to say it, I do it. Madam Fortress Mommy. <laughs> so that's probably my favorite moment. Are we going to get a t-shirt? We should. We totally yeah. should get a t-shirt. That'd be awesome. That would, man. Um, ladies, check back soon. <laughs> down, excuse me. Um, no Park and Barry wanted to know, what is your favorite memory of voicing Eddie in Lloyd in Space? Uh, Eddie was great. Um, that was for Disney, and that was a great, great show. Working with Paul and Joe, who are the creators, awesome, and the other voiceover actors on it. My favorite moment, I, I can't recall like having a favorite moment. I just enjoyed being on the show, working on the show, working with the other voiceover folks. Uh, funny enough, on Lloyd in Space, when we were rapping, one of the other actors uh, was telling me that he was just going to do this Nickelodeon pilot called Sponge Something. And I was like, oh, whatever. And he's like, yeah, who knows? We'll see. Anyway, that was Patrick. So they've had a pretty good run. <laughs> pretty good run is an understatement. So I've told the fans. Pretty good run. Yeah, they, they you know, you, you, you win some and you lose some. And he won on that one massively. And that's oh. those, them the breaks. Ten fucking fold over on Patrick yeah. Starr. So... Uh, like I said, I live here in Orlando and Universal Studios is obviously a part of, or Nickelodeon is a part of Universal Studios at that time, man. And uh, I remember going through, I was probably like six, seven, somewhere around there, eight maybe, you know, so we're walking through uh, Universal Studios gates and my dad's taking me and my younger brother. 
And as we're going to the gates, they're handing out tickets, say, hey, we're rolling out this new show soon. Uh, we'd like you to come by and see it. And at that time, I wanted to be an animator. I wanted to draw. I wanted to make cartoons and everything like that because I would go home and I'd see something I could draw. So we get this ticket, and then I remember us going into, and it's where the Jimmy Fallon ride is now in Orlando. And you would go up to the top, and then you would look down, and you see the artist alley or the artist pit, right? Um, and then I see these this one lone artist over there drawing right on, the, on, the, on this board. And he kept tearing it down and fucking throwing it over his shoulder or throwing it off to the side. And I remember asking the lady, like, hey, why is why does he keep throwing that down? She's like, well, if it's not the way it's supposed to be, he has to start over. And I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, well, my mom says everything I draw is really good. And she would have hung that up on a refrigerator. So yeah. I don't think I could do this as a living, right? Come to find out, that was the last. They were a skeleton crew. They were the ones that were animating and drawing SpongeBob SquarePants before wow. everything moved out to L.A., Right. So wow. I got to see I, I lived in a world before Harry Potter. I lived in a world before cell phones and Internet and SpongeBob of all fucking things, man. So it's, <laughs> it's wild. Great. Right. Um, Keenan and Kel with Adam and Aaron. So I think they're another podcast as well. What do you see Harold doing with his life from high school onward? Well, I mean, clearly Harold would have his own butcher shop. Absolutely. <laughs> He'd be the butcher. He'd be running the show. Harold's Butcher Shop, you know, that'd be the spot in town to get your meat. Absolutely, man. Harold's Meats, man. Uh, Justin Cuthberson, man, I hope, I'm pretty sure I fucked that one up. Uh, I, we talked a little bit about it with the Jungle movie, but what was it like reuniting with the cast and crew for the Jungle movie? Obviously, you said some of the original cast members couldn't come back and play their own characters. Um, but what was it like getting to hang out and be in that same kind of environment and space with all of those guys and gals you did it with 20 years prior? It was awesome. I mean, really fun. So great to see everybody. It was fantastic. And, um, you know, a real joy. It was, it was many I hadn't seen in so many years and, you know, putting, uh, all that time between us and seeing everybody again was fantastic. It was just a blast. Yeah. Did it feel like old times? Did it feel like you were there before? Did you guys slip right into it? I mean, you know, not really, because when I was going in the booth, I was there with two young, very young actors. I mean, I was in my 30s and these kids were like 10 years old. So who were playing Sid and, and Stinky. So, I mean, you know, I was just meeting them for the first time, but we were in the booth together. So it wasn't like, you know, uh, the nostalgia moments for me. Those happened when we went to the Nickelodeon party for uh, the films and I got yeah. to see all the rest of the cast. That was awesome. Was, was it like putting on a pair of comfortable shoes when you got back into the booth for Harold, or did it take a little bit of finessing? Did you have to work for it when, before getting into that booth? Yeah, I had to work for it a bit because, you know, I wanted to make sure that I really got Harold's voice perfectly down because mm -hmm. they made this big deal of auditioning and, you know, were very careful about kind of who they brought back because of voice and so forth. So I wanted to make sure that I had it nailed. So I was listening to it a lot, like in the car and when I went to get in there and then then felt really good about it. How long do you think it took you to kind of get back into that Herald mode? I, I don't know, 30 seconds. Not, oh, not really. Long. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always interesting, man, because you, you hear so many people talk about not just roles, but like you hear comedians will talk about they did a bit 20 years ago and then they can remember it in pieces. They remember it in flashes. You know, sometimes they can kind of get half of the bit out. So it's always interesting to see what you guys can do and where you guys pull from. Um, not going to try to pronounce this one's name. Just know your question was asked. Uh, what do you think Harold's life would be like as an adult? So not so much the occupation, but what do you think he'd be, you know, where do you think he'd be at mentally, emotionally, and physically? I think it'd be Her Harold and Big Patty, and they'd have a couple couple little Harolds and Patties running around. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> um, and maybe Sam he'd be coaching the baseball team as well. Dude, he does look like a baseball coach, doesn't he? Right? <laughs> Samuel Martinez wants to know, uh, is it a coincidence that you got to play two different kinds of bullies from two different shows, Harold from Hey Arnold and Gelman from Recess? Yeah, it's wild. For some odd reason, I would always be cast as the bully. Not that I ever <laughs> was at all. It was the opposite. But um, yeah, I don't know. I was. I guess I was, I was just good at playing that character and that role. It was fun. You know, obviously something that you get to play that's different from who you are naturally is more mm -hmm. fun. So I think I just enjoyed it and Fortunately, they thought I was decent at it. Dude, the, decent's a little understatement, man. You were great. <laughs> um, when you're, 
Were you ever a wrestling fan? Uh, I mean, I watch a little bit, but I wouldn't say I was the hugest fan. So I got to imagine you know who Ric Flair is. It's hard to not, yeah. you know, he's fucking permeated everything when it comes to pop culture. So you don't have to be a wrestling fan to know who, uh, you know, who, who Ric Flair is. But he had this thing where he always said playing the bad guy was so much better because you got to do so much cooler shit. Like the good guy, you had guidelines you had to stick in. Now, obviously, when you're playing a character, you don't really get to choose, you know, whether they're a good person or a bad person. They kind of tell you that beforehand. But do you like playing, not so much that Harold or Ergelman was a bad character, but do you like to play those characters that possibly like gray, they're not the, you know, the white knight or they're not the super dark side of guy? Yeah, I think Ric Flair says it right. It's it's a lot more fun. You know, mm -hmm. when you get to play the bad guy or the villain or the bully, you can, it's just more fun to play with. The good guy is kind of bland and vanilla and boring. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta imagine, man, get to stretch those wings and all right. So Dario Mendoza, he's got three. What's your favorite line from Harold? Do you have one? Uh Madam Fortress Mommy. <laughs> I was setting that one up. I was hoping <laughs> to take that one. Uh so I just closed that, so I apologize. Uh here we go. Um Did you get to uh obviously you said you'd be up to voice him again, so we already answered that one. But um, did you get to meet with the other cast members frequently after you guys left the show? Obviously, you said you and, and, and Jamil were pretty close after, but did you get to hang out at all after that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we'd see each other pretty often. Um, I mean, when we were recording, we'd see each other once a week, right? So that's pretty often. And then we'd see each other at events or parties or, you know, birthday functions and so forth. So we were like, kind of like how you'd hang out with your school friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here we go. Uh, <laughs> would Harold and Binky Barnes from Arthur become friends and would they get along? I'd love to be able to answer that, but I don't know who Binky Barnes is. Me neither. I watched, uh, I watched Arthur like twice as a kid. And... Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry, <laughs> but probably yes. Um, he's, uh, Holly King wants to know, and we talked about this a little bit, but uh, I always wondered how Justin came up with Harold's voice. Did he just find it one day, or is it inspired by another character? So did you see something out there that really inspired you? Like, oh, that's a really cool voice. i got to put that one in my back pocket. That's a great question, Holly. I, I, you know, it just goes back to seeing the character. When you do voiceover work the and you audition for a part, they give you the lines, and they give you a drawing of what the character looks like. So I saw Harold, and um, it just... I, what I thought w of was like the bullies that have interacted with me in my school. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of where I went. It wasn't like a celebrity or another voice from a cartoon. It was just kind of hearing a little bit of their voices and then kind of to see how I could uh, get my voice to sound somewhat similar. Now this might be a stretch for you to try to remember, however. But when you, when you nail in, you lock in that voice. Does Craig go, that's it, we got it. Or does he say, stretch it out a little bit? Does he say, try anything different? I know that's a long time ago to try to remember that, but. Yeah, I don't remember the voice comments. I think, you know, I think the voice was pretty good. It was more like we were just working for 20, 30 minutes mm -hmm. on the role, and the, the character and the lines and, you know, give me some direction. I take direction pretty well. So, you know, just kind of mix it up. And when you're, I think when the creator's there, or the director's there, a lot of times they're just looking to see how much you can take direction even if they like what you're doing when if you're going to continue you know they may want you to try something different and it can can you do something different can you take their direction and go off and throw out what you're doing and try something totally new i think that's kind of what we did i mean i don't remember exactly but i just remember kind of playing along and us kind of finding it together absolutely man um, and uh, this will be the last one for the fans' questions, and we'll have a couple more, and then we'll do the wrap-up. Um, Hugo, and this one's a really cool one because you, you said this one's your favorite episode. So Hugo Hugo Seagal wanted to know, I'd be curious to hear Justin's recent impressions of the episode of Harold's Bar Mitzvah, uh, as well as how it continues to resonate with the Jewish communities of all ethnic backgrounds. So what's that feel like? i got to feel like that's got to be something super special. A lot of people probably approach you about that episode in particular, but what's that feel like, man? That's cool. You know, I've never gotten that question before. I didn't know that. That's very mm -hmm. nice to hear. Um, uh, that's great. I love that the, that that question's out there, and that I hope that it does touch a lot of folks because it's it was very important. 
to do that episode. I'll tell you a little funny anecdote. So I grew, I'm Jewish. I had a bar mitzvah, um, but not super religious and wasn't so great on the prayers. So Craig came to me and said, hey, we want to do this Herald's bar mitzvah episode. I'm not Jewish. I know you are. Can you work on some of the prayers so when he's up on the on during the, the Torah, we can get those correct? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. So I reached out to one of my best friends who mm -hmm. was Orthodox Jewish and still is. And I was like, all right, I need these prayers. You know, what am I going to say up there? So he gave them to me. I gave them to Craig. We go there. We read it. We record it. The episode comes out. I get a call from my buddy saying, dude, you said the wrong prayers. I was like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, all oh, those prayers were wrong. You were doing the prayer for the wine when you were up in the tour. That's totally wrong. I was like, oh, well, hopefully nobody ever finds out. <laughs> Has anybody approached you other than your buddy? Nope. Nobody's Fucking ever called it. me out on it. Maybe we should cut this part out then. <laughs> um... <laughs> no, it's kind of funny. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So that concludes the fans' questions. I got a couple more, man. Like I said, we'll do the wrap up. So these are the ones I've tried to uh, install the last few episodes because I've had a lot of fun with them seeing what you guys say. So you're throwing a dinner party. You get five guests, dead or alive. You're cooking, right? So who are the five guests plus yourself? And what are you cooking? And what are you guys talking about? Cool, cool. Five guests. That's a good one. Uh, I, I got to say, Michael Jordan, always been a huge fan. George Washington, you know, you got to find out how the country was formed, right? Yeah. And that whole process, that'd be neat. Um, let's see, who else? JFK. Mm -hmm. JFK was a big fan. would love to find out what happened with him. Charlize Theron, just because she's so gorgeous and I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, who else? Who else would be good? Maybe Napoleon, the yeah. French uh, conqueror. That'd be neat to hear from him what He's that was like so we'd all sit around i'd make some salmon because i know that's that's a staple that i'm very good at doing everybody loves it and then on the side probably some sweet potatoes have some nice bottles of wine start with some martinis you know go over to one of my favorite bakeries get a nice tiramisu for dessert we'd be good to go man that sounds dope as shit so i'm glad you brought up sweet potatoes man i don't know if you can i don't know if you can get them where you're at because i know it's I believe it's pretty particular to down here. However, if you can ever get a Murasaki sweet potato, it's M-U-R-A-S-A-K-I, I believe. Uh, it's a white sweet potato, right? And the way we do them in the restaurant, we take them, coat them in a little oil, a little salt, and we throw them in the oven uh, 350 until they're like fucking fork tender. They're like mush inside the skin, right? Then we let them cool a little bit, peel them off, and then we throw them through a food processor, and we're adding brown butter to it right mm. so nothing but brown butter salt and here's the kicker they don't know this at the restaurant because this is my secret my little secret sauce right you get a bottle of really good sugar cane or you get a really good bottle of sorghum right it's way better than maple syrup on pancakes and waffles um and sorghum is very very good um and then you add a couple splashes of that into your sweet potatoes dude it fucking as the kids say it slaps man wow that sounds right. amazing dude i'd love that right now <laughs> yeah, it's very, very simple. It's one of those things that sells so hot at the restaurant right now. Um, but That's fantastic. Cool. Uh, and I have a feeling that you're going to start a fight with Napoleon and Michael Jordan just because of Michael Jordan. I'm a huge basketball. I'm a Magic fan. Uh, so, you know, Jordan being 6'6 and Napoleon being 5'6, I can imagine you're going to start a fight. You're going to start another war. No doubt. I mean, as it should be. Um, and then, you know, Washington will break it up. I hope so, man. What are you guys? <laughs> what are you guys talking about, man? So that was the third part of that last part. Oh, what are we talking about? That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I think we'd be talking about like what it was like to play basketball back in the day when, uh, in, you know, seventeen seventy six. Did they even think about it? Uh, what does Washington think of Michael Jordan? You know, when are we? What, are we going to make a movie together? You know, what's the movie going to be about? Is it going to be about like history or basketball? Um, and yeah, we'd just be jamming talking about how good my food is pretty much oh that's dope man uh so you get to be a fly on the wall for any creation we'll keep it in animation or if you want to do film we can stretch out the film but you can be a fly on the wall for a creation of any character throughout film animation what have you where would you like to be a wall be on fly on the wall at and what would you like to get it created and why uh, I, I think for sure Homer for The Simpsons. It'd be so yeah. fun to kind of hear uh, Matt Groening and, and, and the writing team come up with and draw it and, and conceptualize it. You know, Homer's iconic. Um, you know, by the way, a little trivia, you may already know this,
but Grandpa in Hey Arnold was played by Homer, by Dan Cassiolani. Really? Yeah. Yeah, super nice guy. Really sweet guy. Yeah, dude, it, it's that, when you look at that voice cast, like for the longest time, I didn't know Bart was voiced by a female, right? My, mm -hmm. my favorite animated sitcom of all time was always King of the Hill. And mm -hmm. there's like certain characters, because I always assume that when you're a little kid, you just assume, well, it's a guy character, so it's a guy, or it's a girl character, so it's a girl. And then you start getting older and you start, you know, reading and shit, and you're like, oh, wow, like guys can play girls, girls can play guys. Like, holy shit, this is the fucking craziest thing I've ever seen. I didn't know you could do that with your voice, because... I've kind of been stuck with this voice since I was like 12, right? It's gotten a little mm -hmm. raspier as I've gotten older, but I was like, the fact that you can change, I, like, I'm always so fascinated with impressions and folks like yourself that can do voices because you sound one way and then you can make your sound self sound completely different. You can be a different human being, you know, for any, <laughs> for as long as you want to be. It's just so fascinating. And, and that show in particular, I got to do a little bit of a deep dive with it last year on the podcast. I had a few people that were on with storyboards, directors. Nice. Um, you know, so getting to see and hear like that first 10 seasons, like that everybody says the first 10 seasons of The Simpsons is perfect. He's like, yeah. after the first 10, it starts to get a little wonky because they kind of retcon a whole bunch of stuff. And he's right. like, it takes a lot of the heart and, and soul out of the show. But, you know, I have a lot of fun with it because I'm getting I'm getting to watch the entire series with my oldest son now. And we weren't allowed to watch it as kids because, you know, my mom didn't want anybody like Bart. My mom didn't want anybody like Angelica. So <laughs> we had to we had to sneak around for that one, man. Um, so this is the last one, and uh, we'll get out of here after this one. You sit down at the end of the night, man. Obviously, I know you for Hey Arnold, man, because like I said, it was my favorite, one of my favorite shows of all time. So it's going to be a Hey Arnold specific one. But you sit down, and if you could sum up your experience, your time, you know, the character, the show, Hey Arnold, one word, one sentence, one paragraph, man, what would your time be for Hey Arnold? What would you, what would you have to say about it? Fantastic, nostalgic time, wonderful part of my childhood, and it's a it's an honor and a privilege that I got to be part of a show and play a character that had such a huge impact on the next generation of kids. Yeah. And we still get to talk about the show after wrapping it practically 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, well, that's cool, man. And like I said, dude, it's it, this has been a real honor, man. I really enjoy getting to talk to anybody I have on this podcast. But when I can sit here and talk to a literal piece of my childhood, man, ah, does the heart good, man. Uh, well, awesome. where where can the folks go and find you? And what are you working on now? That way we can push some traffic towards your way. Like I said, Thank I you. love yeah. the come page. come check me out. I'm I'm on all the socials: Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Just at my full name at Justin Shankaro. A couple years ago, I got in the NFT Web3 space, so I actually started my own animation company. So we do cartoons for for projects. We have some really amazing, adorable cartoons that we've got uh, that we've done. Come check them out, and then definitely watch uh, Spidey and His Amazing Friends. It's on Disney Plus. Check it out. It's fantastic. Number one show. So great if you got a two to six year old child or niece or nephew. It's a fantastic show, and I love being a part of it and a few other projects in development. But, yeah, hit me up on the socials, and we'll chat. This has been the What's In My Head podcast, and this has been another piece of your childhood. Good night.